in the quiet moments of being by ourselves, there's a special kind of magic waiting to be found. It's like finding a hidden treasure in your own backyard that's been there all along, waiting just for you to discover it. This treasure is the deep, fulfilling joy of being happy all on your own. Imagine for a moment you're sitting all by yourself in a room. At first, it might seem a little scary, maybe even a bit lonely. But then, as you sit there longer, you start to notice things. Maybe it's the way the sunlight dances on the walls or how the silence wraps around you like a warm blanket. Suddenly, you realize you're not lonely. You're in great company. Your own. Just being happy alone isn't about turning away from the world. It's about turning towards yourself so much that you find a world within you just as rich and interesting as the one outside. It's about knowing that you can be your own best friend, someone who's always there for you, cheering you on, ready to explore new adventures together. For how do we get there? How do we find this treasure? It starts with small steps. Maybe it's spending an afternoon doing something you love just for the joy of it, or learning something new that you've always been curious about. It's about filling your own cup first, so you're not thirsty for validation or happiness from others. It's along the way. You might stumble upon some rocks. You might feel a bit lonely or doubt if you can really be happy on your own. That's okay. It's all part of the journey. Each time you choose to keep going, to find joy in your own company, you're planting a garden of happiness within yourself. And like any garden, it needs time, patience, and a lot of love to Remember, the most amazing people in history found their deepest insights and joys in moments of solitude. They show us that being alone doesn't have to mean being lonely. It can mean being fully alive, deeply in tune with who you are and what makes you happy. So, Let's not be afraid of spending time with ourselves. Let's embrace it as an adventure, an opportunity to discover the endless joy and peace that lies within us. Let's be brave and start this journey today, knowing that the in this journey, we're not just finding happiness. We're coming home to ourselves, and there's no greater joy than that. So, take a deep breath, smile, and dive into the beautiful journey of being happy alone. It's a path that leads to a treasure only you can find. The true, shining, unbreakable happiness that comes from within. Let's begin this journey together one step at a time into the amazing world of our own company. When we talk about happiness, what picture does it paint in your mind? For many, it's the perfect day with friends, a dream job, or perhaps living in a house that looks like it was plucked straight from a magazine cover. But let me share something a bit unconventional with you. Happiness isn't always about these big external milestones or the perfect set of circumstances. It's something far simpler, and happiness, in its truest form, is a state of mind. Now, I know what you might be thinking, but don't I need the perfect partner, the dream job, or the ideal lifestyle to be happy? This is where most of us get sidetracked. We fall into the trap of thinking happiness is something that happens to us, something that comes from the perfect set of external conditions. But if there's one thing I've learned, it's that waiting for happiness to come knocking on our door because we've achieved something or acquired someone is like waiting for a train at an abandoned station. Let's break down this notion a bit. There's a common misconception that to be truly happy, we need to fill our lives with perfect moments and perfect people. But have you ever noticed how fleeting those moments of happiness are when they depend on something or someone outside of ourselves? One minute, we're on cloud nine because everything's going our way. And the next, we're back to feeling empty because something didn't turn out as expected. This roller coaster of emotions is what you sign up for when your happiness is tied. Now contrast this with happiness that comes from within. Imagine finding joy in your own company feeling content with where you are right now, and finding peace in the simple moments, reading a book, enjoying a cup of coffee, or simply sitting in silence and appreciating the beauty of the... This kind of happiness doesn't waver when external circumstances change because it's not dependent on them. It's a steady, unwavering light that shines from within, illuminating our lives regardless of what's happening around us. Let me give you an example to illustrate this difference. Think about someone who bases their happiness on their career's success. 
They might feel on top of the world when they're promoted but crash down to earth when faced with a setback. Now imagine someone else who finds joy in their work itself, who takes pride in their growth and learning regardless of the recognition they receive. This person's happiness is self-sustained. It's not shaken by external validations or set. So how do we cultivate this inner source of happiness? It starts with a simple decision to find joy in our own journey, to appreciate ourselves, and to make peace with where we are at this moment. It's about turning inward and asking, and then giving ourselves permission to pursue that happiness, not as defined by society, media, or anyone else, but as defined by our own hearts and souls. In this journey of understanding happiness, let's not forget that happiness is not a destination to be reached, but a manner of traveling. It's woven into the fabric of our daily lives, waiting for us to recognize it's in the love we give to ourselves and the peace we find in our solitude. It's in the realization that we are enough just as we are, and that our happiness is ours to create, nurture. So, as we continue on this path, let's remember to look within for the joy and contentment we seek. Let's cultivate a garden of happiness within our own hearts, one that flourishes not from external validations, but from the deep well of self-love, acceptance. This, my friends, is the true essence of happiness. It's in the tapestry of life. Being alone is often painted with the somber colors of loneliness. But let's unravel this misconception and rediscover solitude as a vibrant hue essential for a masterpiece. Understanding the difference between solitude and loneliness is the first step in appreciating the unique value each moment of aloneness brings. Solitude is a chosen state, a period of self-reflection, growth, loneliness. On the other hand, is the feeling of being isolated, craving connections that seem out of reach. Recognizing this distinction clears the path to embracing solitude not as a void but as a space filled with potential. Imagine solitude as a room where the walls are mirrors reflecting your true self, a place for deep conversations with your inner being away from the world's noise. It's in these quiet moments that creativity whispers, where self-discovery unfolds and inner peace takes root. Studies and anecdotes alike tell us of great minds finding their brightest ideas in the silence of being alone, from writers drawing upon solitude to pen novels that touch the depths of the human experience to scientists finding answers to complex questions in the stillness of the night. Solitude has been the silent partner in the dance of discovery and innovation throughout history. How do we unlock the door to enjoying our own company? The key is intentionality, choosing activities that foster self-reflection and personal growth. It could be as simple as taking a walk in nature, journaling, or exploring a hobby. You've all These moments are opportunities to ask ourselves thought-provoking questions. What brings me joy? What are my dreams? How can I grow from my challenges? The answers to these questions are like threads weaving the fabric of our character, coloring our life with the rich patterns of self-knowledge and fulfillment. So, solitude offers us a canvas to paint our aspirations and fears, to experiment with the palette of our emotions, and to ultimately create a portrait of who we are and who we aspire to be. It's in solitude that we can listen to our heart's desires without the cacophony of external expectations drowning them out. This doesn't mean we cut ourselves off from the world. On the contrary, it means we engage with it more fully, bringing a whole and content self to our interactions with others. Embracing solitude is an invitation to a journey, a journey to the center of our being where happiness and peace reside. It's a journey that asks for courage, for it requires us to face the parts of ourselves we often run from. Yet it's in this confrontation that we find liberation, the freedom to be authentically ourselves, unapologetically alive in our skin. So let's begin this journey, not by stepping away from the world, but by stepping deeper into ourselves. Let's discover the joy of being alone, not as a sentence to loneliness, but as an opportunity for growth, creativity. Let's turn the moments of solitude into chapters of our greatest story, the story of becoming who we were always meant to be. In solitude, we find not the shadow of loneliness, 
but the light of our own company, a light that guides us back home to ourselves, to the happiness that blooms from within, waiting to be discovered, nurtured. At the heart of a fulfilling life lies a profound relationship, not with someone else, but with oneself. This journey begins with self-awareness, the cornerstone of personal growth and happiness. Knowing oneself isn't an act of self-indulgence, but a critical step towards living a life that's authentically yours. It's about peeling back the layers to discover your true interests, values. Imagine being a detective in your own life, uncovering clues about what truly makes you tick. It's a fascinating journey that never ends, for as you grow and change, so too do the depths of your inner self. Yet, as we embark on this journey of self-discovery, we must do so with kindness and compassion. Often, we are our harshest critics, berating ourselves for our shortcomings and failures. But what if we treated ourselves with the same kindness and understanding we offer to a good friend? Self-compassion is not about making excuses for our mistakes, but about recognizing our common humanity. Everyone stumbles, everyone has weaknesses, and it's through embracing these imperfections that we find strength and resilience. So by practicing self-compassion, we create a space for personal growth and happiness that's based on love and acceptance, not judgment and criticism. Scracing self-improvement is a natural progression of building a relationship with oneself. It's about setting goals that challenge and inspire you, that push you to learn and grow. Sows and pursuit of personal growth is not a destination but a journey, one that's enriched by continuous learning and exploration, whether it's picking up a new skill, diving into a book that challenges your perspectives, or simply dedicating time to reflect on your personal progress. Each step on this path brings you closer to the person you aspire to be. But how do we navigate this journey of self-improvement? Start by setting clear, achievable goals. Break these goals down into small, manageable steps. Celebrating your progress along the way? Remember, the journey is as important as it's embraced. The lessons learned from setbacks, as they are invaluable stepping stones towards your goals. Stay curious, stay open to new experiences, and most importantly, stay committed. Building a relationship with oneself is an ongoing process, a lifelong journey of discovery, compassion, and improvement. It's about waking up each day and choosing to invest in yourself to prioritize your well-being, happiness. This journey is personal and unique, a path that only you can walk, but one that leads to a rich, fulfilled. So let's take this step together with the understanding that being kind to ourselves, knowing ourselves deeply, and continually striving to grow are not just acts of self-love, but acts of courage. Let's embrace the journey of building a relationship with ourselves. For it is in this relationship that we find the keys to a life well-lived, filled with joy, purpose, and endless possibilities. In navigating the journey of life, obstacles to happiness often appear as towering mountains, casting shadows over our path. Yet, it's not the presence of these obstacles that defines our journey, but how we choose to confront and identifying these barriers fear, self-doubt, and the habit of comparison is the first step towards reclaiming our joy. Fear, a formidable adversary, often whispers doubts into our ears, telling us stories of impending failure and disappointment. It's a natural response, wired into our very being for survival. However, when it comes to pursuing happiness, fear can be a misleading guide, steering us away from potential joy and fulfillment. Similarly, self-doubt creeps in, eroding our confidence making us question our worth, and then there's the comparison trap, a modern-day pitfall exacerbated by social media where we measure our behind-the-scenes against everyone else's highlight reels, inevitably feeling inadequate. So how do we dismantle these barriers? The answer lies in cultivating a mindset of positive thinking, resilience, and perseverance. Positive thinking isn't about ignoring life's problems but facing them with an attitude that allows us to remain hopeful and focused on solutions. It's about acknowledging our fears and doubts, yet choosing to believe in our capacity to resilience. The ability to bounce back from setbacks is like a muscle that strengthens with use. 
Every challenge we face and overcome fortifies our resolve and confidence, teaching us that we are more capable and perseverance. The steadfast pursuit of our goals, despite difficulties, is the fuel that propels us forward, ensuring that we don't give up on ourselves and our pursuit of happiness. Consider the story of a woman who, after a series of failed relationships and career setbacks, found herself engulfed in self-doubt and loneliness. She could have succumbed to despair, yet she embraced solitude, using it as a foundation for self-discovery and growth. She explored new hobbies, volunteered, and traveled alone, discovering joys and strengths she never knew she had. So over time, her confidence blossomed, and she built a life filled with happiness that was not dependent on external validation but rooted in self acceptance Her journey reminds us that happiness is not a destination, but a manner of traveling through life, embracing each experience as an opportunity for growth. To embark on this path of overcoming obstacles to happiness, start by identifying your fears and doubts. Write them down, confront them, and then, one by one, challenge them. Replace negative self-talk with affirmations that affirm your worth and surround yourself with people who uplift and support you, distancing yourself from comparisons and negativity. Most importantly, embrace challenges as opportunities to learn and grow, knowing that each step forward, no matter how small, is a step towards a happier, more fulfilled you. In conclusion, overcoming obstacles To happiness is not about eradicating fear, self-doubt, or the tendency to compare ourselves with others. It's about learning to navigate these challenges with grace, resilience, and a pot. It's about building a relationship with ourselves that's grounded in compassion, understanding us as we journey through life. Let's remember that happiness is within our reach, waiting for us to overcome the obstacles that stand in our way and to embrace the joy that lies on the other side. In the garden of life, happiness blooms from seeds we plant and nurture every day. Cultivating happiness isn't a grand, elusive scheme. It's woven into the fabric of our daily habits, the relationships we cherish. Let's start with the daily habits that serve as the soil for our happiness to grow. Gratitude, mindfulness, and physical activity are not just actions but invitations to a richer, more content life. Gratitude shifts our focus from what's missing to the abundance that's already. It's as simple as starting or ending your day by jotting down three things you're thankful for. This practice transforms our perception, coloring our world with a hue of positivity. Mindfulness, the art of being fully present, reminds us that happiness is not a destination, but a journey. It's about savoring the sip of morning coffee, feeling the sun's warmth on your skin, or simply breathing in the calm of the moment. I've seen these slices of life. When fully appreciated, stitch together a tapestry of joy that's independent of external circumstances. Physical activity, be it a brisk walk, a dance session in your living room, or a rigorous workout, is not just a boon for our physical health, but a catalyst for mental well-being. It clears the mind, boosts mood, and serves as a tangible reminder of our resilience and strength. Real love relationships and our happiness cannot be overstated. Healthy relationships are the pillars upon which our happiness rests. They provide support, love, and a sense of belonging. However, equally important is the being content alone, finding joy in our own company, and embracing solitude as a time for growth and reflection are foundational to our well-being. It's in these moments of solitude that we reconnect with our inner selves, our dreams, and our passions. Side, giving back, the act of contributing to the community and helping others, is a powerful pathway to happiness. It shifts our focus from what we lack to what we can give, fostering a sense of purpose and fulfillment, whether it's volunteering, supporting a friend, or simply offering a kind word to a stranger. These acts of kindness ripple outwards enhancing our sense of connection and joy. Incorporating these practices into our daily lives is not a Herculean task, but a series of small, intentional choices. Choose to start your day with gratitude. To be fully present in each moment, 
to move your body in a way that celebrates its capabilities to nurture relationships with others and yourself and to give back in ways both. By doing so, you're not just cultivating happiness in your own life, but sowing seeds of joy in the world around you. And remember, the pursuit of happiness is not a solitary journey, but one we share with those around us. So as we embark on this path together, let's uplift each other, share our light, and collectively nurture a garden where happiness blossoms for all. As we journey through the winding paths of life, it's essential to remember that the quest for happiness is not a pursuit of external treasures, but an exploration of the vast landscapes within us. Today, we've traversed topics from embracing solitude to cultivating daily habits that anchor us in the present moment, enriching our lives with a depth of joy and contentment that's both profound and Happiness our conversation circles back to a fundamental truth. Happiness is an inside job. It's a craft honed not by the accumulation of external achievements or validations, but by nurturing a relationship with oneself that's rooted in understanding. It's about recognizing that in the symphony of life, we are both the composers and the conductors of our happiness. Now, I invite you to take these insights and weave them into the fabric of your daily life. Start small, perhaps with a gratitude journal, a mindful walk, or a quiet moment of reflection. And pray solitude as a canvas for self-expression and discovery, a sanctuary where you can reconnect with your innermost aspirations and dreams. Let these practices be your tools to sculpt a life of happiness that's resilient. Remember, every step you take on this journey enriches your life with a little more light, a little more joy. And as you walk this path, know that you're not alone. We're all on this journey together, supporting each other, learning from each other, and sharing in the universal pursuit of happiness. So, as we part ways today, I leave you with this message. Believe in the power within you to cultivate happiness. Trust in your ability to navigate the complexities of life with grace. So embrace the beauty of your own company and let it be the foundation upon which you build a life filled with joy, purpose. Let's not see the, the end of our time together as a conclusion, but it has the beginning of a new chapter in our lives, a chapter where we choose happiness at every turn, not as a distant goal, but as a way of being. Let's step into this new chapter with courage, with open hearts, and with the unwavering belief that 